What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. Tell me if your home dining room table looks like mine. I'm getting ready for yet another weekend at hunting camp plus gator season. These are the ropes that I've rigged my baits with. This is the crossbow you obviously saw Jake shoot his hog with and the crossbow that hopefully Luke's going to kill his first deer with this weekend. We got some new grilling slash camping products. I'm getting the truck ready, getting everything loaded up, but before I go, I got to give a huge shout out to EcoFlow and the Delta 2. This thing is legit. Like our hunting camp is having some extreme wiring issues. It's old, it's been there for 15 years and some of the outlets aren't working and it gets hot at night and we need a ceiling fan. And that's where the Delta 2 comes into play. So you've seen me advertise EcoFlow many a times. I have the air conditioner, I have other battery packs, smaller ones than this. This is not just a battery, but a great addition to all your home appliances. You can load it in the truck, take it with you anywhere you go, put it on the boat. You can keep it in the trunk of your car in case anything happens, especially some of you people way up north where it gets crazy cold. If you was to get in an accident or something like that and your, your car or your truck's disabled, this thing right here will keep you alive, I promise. Especially if you have a little portable heater, and what we're going to use it for is fans and lights at camp. And I can't wait to get out there. I can't wait to get this deer season started. But let me tell you a little bit more about the Delta 2. Using the EcoFlow app, you can keep track of energy usage and adjust settings, which makes it nice at hunting camp, especially if you're kicked back in a rocking chair and don't feel like getting up. The Delta 2 has incredible fast charging. You can charge it from zero to 80% in 50 minutes, zero to 100% in 80 minutes. And when you're using the solar panels, you can charge it in three to six hours with 500 watt solar input. The Delta 2 also has incredibly long lasting battery life. It uses LFP batteries, which is the same type of batteries as in a Tesla. Six times longer than the industry's 500 cycle average. If used once a day, it can be used for 10 years. One of the other really awesome features is the way you can charge it. You can charge it in your car or an AC charging port and it has a smart generator charging port. So once I get out to hunting camp, the Delta 2 has the powerful 1800 AC output. You can power up to 15 devices simultaneously with 2200 watts with the EcoFlow's X-Boost technology. You tell me what else I can run a fan, make me a mixed drink, and charge my GoPro batteries all at one time. Out in the woods when we're camping. Like, hey, you know you want a cold pina colada after a long deer hunt. All right, you guys, if you're interested in the EcoFlow Delta 2, head to the link in the description below this video and check it out. Right now, I'm headed to get the kids from school. We're headed two and a half hours to Ona, Florida, and we're gonna get this party started. Are you ready to go kill something? Yeah. What you gonna shoot? If we see a hog, then I'll shoot that. If we see a deer, then I'll shoot that. What you gonna shoot it with? Crossbow? Jake, are you ready or what? I'm ready. Are you ready to do it on your own though? Mm -hmm. On your own. Jake actually last year sat by himself one time and he ended up killing a hog. Today is the first time he's ever sat by himself where he's going to actually be trying for a deer. Luke and I are going to go sit in the blind right here beside camp where we do have a picture of a good buck but a bunch of hogs. Check out the side by side. Y'all notice anything different? It's got some new shoes. Got a little bit of a lift. Oh yeah. Got the gator cooler in the back. We're ready to rip, tater chip. And I put a reverse light on it so I can actually see when I'm backing up. Luke, you want to stay here while I take Jake, or you want to go with us? I'll go with you. You son, you got to, you got to make eye contact with us. Look here, you got anything you want to say to the fans at home? No. Nothing? You never don't have anything to say. No. Because I don't. We're taking Jake all the way to the back, and I don't want to be talking while we're going. So the next time you see me, we're going to be walking that away to Luke's blind. And this is Luke's first ever deer hunt. All right, so I just dropped Jake off and now I'm getting ready to take Luke out. I got to fix us some snacks. If I can give you any tips or pointers when you're taking a kid hunting, make sure you have lots of snacks because they get hungry about 24 seven. Take a pea bottle, take you some crackers, Maybe a Gatorade, a pack of muffins, put them in a Ziploc so they don't make so much noise in your bag. Is that, you brought a rain jacket? Oh man, so anyhow, when we were just taking Jake to the stand, we didn't bring rain jackets for everybody and there's a big, huge storm coming. 
One, I didn't want to put him in the ladder stand because there's lightning coming. Two, I didn't want him to get soaked, so I actually put him in a ground blind where there's a big bar hog coming. There's a six pointer, a couple does, and I mean, we're coming into the rut here in the next few weeks, so anything could show up. But he is on the ground today, he's not in the ladder. Luke and I are going to walk over here about 400 yards and get in a blind where we have a ton of hogs coming, and I do have a picture of one real big buck. This video is, I'm going to show you tomorrow and tonight, I'm going to show you things I didn't show you in the last video. We're going to ride around, show you different stands, show you different sections of the woods. We're not in a rush. Last video, I was in a crazy rush. Today, we're not. So we're going to get all of our gear and see you all over there in the blind. I'm taking three bolts for the crossbow. Got to take two thermocells, shooting sticks, drinks, and Luke, and we're going to walk. So we'll see you all over there. got set up, got the crossbow cocked, and now we're waiting. This blind is so cool. You ready to shoot something big? second dot don't get your finger off that trigger right wait 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 there's a tree in the way I, I can see just wait 
see the second dot down. That's the one you gotta put on them. Wait a second. Wait till I tell you to. Just take your time and relax. There's a little trees in the way. Gently squeeze the trigger. said he sees two bucks. What? Shh. He said he saw two bucks. That hawk didn't go anywhere, son. Yes. 35 yards. He smoked him. That hawk's toast. Like, I was like, standing right here, and like, I was like, shit. Go find this big hog. Let's go. Come here. You gotta be real quiet and patient. trail. Let's look for your arrow. This is you don't see all the red blood? This is where I used to stay. Look for your arrow. Your arrow's got to be somewhere right here. Alright, come here. Come here. Come here. Follow the blood. I want you to follow the blood. Okay. Right here. Look. You see it all in the ground? Go. Keep going. Keep going. Look right there. Look all in the leaves. Oh, here's an arrow. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh my gosh, it's bloody. All right, let's keep going. It's bloody. Look for the red. Okay, here's red. Right through here. Right here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nope. Keep looking down on the ground. Keep walking. You'll see it. Look right here. Look right there. Look right through there. Oh, there he is. You see him? Yeah. What? You got him, son. That's a big one. That's a big one. Hold that. Hold that thing's head up. Huh. Man. Thing. That's a big one. Man, that's a huge one. How are we gonna hold how are we gonna get him? We gotta go get the side by side. Okay. That's a big joke. Come here, give me five. 
Look at the spider you just walked through. Look at it. Yeah, and also at the camp there was a huge one by Dad's truck. That spider just got on you. All right, we're still, we still have deer in the area, so we're gonna go get the side by side, get in here as quick as we can, and get out. That hog's covered in blood, and I don't want to have to cut the scene, so I'm not gonna show you up close until I wash it off. We'll be right back. So Mr. Jimmy and a couple of his buddies, they're also on this lease and they're here and Luke wants to go tell them what he did. I shot a big boar. What'd you get? Go tell them, go tell them the story. A huge boar, I, I hit him in the boar? A sow, it's a female, good eating sow. All right. Tell them how you did it. I would have hit him right here and the arrow came all the way out there. Like we found him like he was dead. And he went all the way through the sow? Yeah, he went like all the way through. Oh really? Yeah. Who blood trailed it? Yeah, right. All by himself. Good for you, bud. His first time ever. Congratulations. Good job. I've, I have shot it. No, but oh, you never blood trailed anything before. <laughs> Good job, regardless. <laughs> All right, let's go get him, Luke. So we just got Luke's hog back to camp, cleaned it, and it is absolutely flooding. Look at that. The bad thing is, is Jake's still out there. He's still in the blind and I gotta go get him. Poor Luke doesn't want to get wet. I don't blame him. The mosquitoes are so bad under here right now. What are so cold right now? Can I get the hand warmers on me? You need, you're cold. I'm very cold. Poor, poor Jake is roughing it out there right now. Fortunately, he is in a blind though, so that's a good thing. Do you want to go get Jake or do you want to stay here? I'm staying here. All right, I'll go get him. I mean, it is absolutely flooding out there. Oh, you'll be okay. I'll be right back. We just got back from getting Jake. My shirt's not even wet. I gotta give the biggest shout out ever to Frog Dogs. They just came out with, now my sleeves are a little bit wet, but you gotta realize I was running 20 miles an hour to get him. This new rain jacket they just came out with, fits in a little bag about that big. and will keep you dry in even the worst conditions. My shirt's dry. My pants, bone dry. And both of them put together will fit in a pocket of a pair of shorts. They're not out yet, they'll be ready, I think next fall. And when they come out, you guys better get you a pair because they are legit. Frog Talks has come so far with their new technology, it's not even funny. Thank you dear God for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for keeping us safe in our stands and during the storm. And thank you for letting Luke be able to shoot a second hog and for us to be able to see all the animals we saw and all the things we've seen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Hold this camera real quick. Let me show. Let me show them what old Blue Gaby can do to a steak. We don't have much utensils out here. Probably gonna get some more here soon. I mean, look at that perfection, medium rare. Oh yeah. Come on, Jake. Tell us what you think. It's really good. Oh. Mm. That's the bomb diggy. Yeah. Mm. We're going to dig in, eat all kinds of good food, and see y'all in the morning because we're going back after them. We're switching stands. We're going after a deer in the morning, but a hog will get shot if it needs to. Y'all remember the part of Forrest Gump when Lieutenant Dane asked God where he was and he showed up with that absolutely horrendous storm? That's pretty much what happened last night. It rained from 7 o'clock till I think 5 a.m. this morning. It absolutely flooded, so we didn't get up and hunt. Mr. Jimmy Doe, he took his son to his tree stand and he went through water so deep his radiator fan went through his radiator. Holy moly. So today we got to go put batteries and cameras. We got to put some corn and feeders. We're going to set up some new stands and I'm going to show you all around this awesome ranch. And then probably this evening we'll hunt. Plus we have this beautiful hog that Luke killed. I think we're going to eat some of it, but we're going to go find somebody and give some of that hog to him. Somebody who really could use some meat and it'll help, you know, benefit them in a positive way. Tell them about moving all the wood this morning. Did I work you to death or what? I love it. <laughs> They're awful quiet this morning. I'm ready to go hunting. All right, well, there's work to do besides hunting, and that's what I'm here to teach you to today. 
I think a lot of kids take for granted what us parents do on a day in and day out basis to get all the things we do accomplished. So today, the boys are gonna learn just a little fraction of what it is us parents do. So, and we're taking y'all along. Oh, it's nice and sunny now, no wind. Doesn't look like there's any rain in the forecast, so let's get this party started. So first up on the agenda, I'm gonna show you where Luke killed his hog last night and just how close it is to camp. I'm pretty much just gonna roll the clip. Just like that, we're here. So here in South Florida, in a lot of the southeast part of America, we have oak hammocks. And deer and hogs, turkeys, everything loves acorns, acorns. So all these are oak trees and they're starting to drop right now. But you can't help but to put a feeder out just to give the hogs a little bit extra to eat. So as you can see, that's the blind. His hog was right here. You've already seen all of this. I just wasn't talking very much last night because I was wanting to be quiet, let the animals come back in and feed a little bit more. Feeder looks like it's got plenty of corn in it. Oh yeah. So right here is my camera. These are cell phone style cameras. So they send you the picture. They text it and send it to your phone, which is pretty cool because besides changing the batteries you don't even really have to come over here and do it you got batteries mm -hmm. all right let's change it up they take a lot of batteries 12. all right just like that we got them all changed out you got the old ones i got the old ones I found a big cow bone. imagine that you found a bone that's probably a, a old t-rex bone man the mosquitoes are bad in here yeah i feel bad for the animals that live out here i could only imagine what it's like to deal with these kind of bugs oh man so i turned the camera on gotta close this little lid right here we're good to go make sure i clean the lens all right let's go so the reason i chose this location for this feeder is because it's so close to camp anybody that's here that wants to kill a hog can come sneak in here and more than likely kill one and not go back in the back where the majority of our deer are. Come on, young jitterbug. Time to go to the next one. Let's roll. We'll see you at the next spot. So we were just east of camp at that last spot. Now we're on the west side of camp where three pastures come together and where two big oak flats come together. This is the bull pasture. This time of the year, they separate the bulls from the cows. What's up, G? Hey, I got a picture of you. You were checking my camera out yesterday. I know it. Oh, whoa. Hey, ease up. Ease up, killers. Easy. Somebody's gonna break a nail. Hey. Calm yourself. Jake, go jump on one's back. Man, that is some pure power. Uh-oh, now he's pissed off. Uh-oh, everybody's coming to the fight. Look, no jumping. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, fair fights only. Relax. That's a bunch of pissed off testosterone right there. Look at them, they're mad, boys. So I wanna show you really quick a really cool spot to put a deer stand and why I'm gonna sit here this coming weekend. You got big open pasture all out there and all out there. Here you've got a big oak flat and an oak flat. 
See how this gate's open? A lot of times animals will take the path of least resistance and they'll come and cross right through here trying to cut tracks with a doe that might be an estrus coming into heat. We might have to deal with some bulls, but I'm thinking right here is going to be a good spot. I'll put a lock on up in there. Oh yeah. We've got a camera right out here though. We're gonna go change the batteries in it. Come on, Luke. Those bulls were pissed, weren't they? Yeah. Come on, Luke. What? You're leaving your spear? I got ants on it. Oh. All right, let's roll. Oh, Blondie right here, he's still pissed. I'd be pissed off too if I had mosquitoes on my you know what, he's like, he probably did this morning. Man, they're mad also. Something's in the air this morning. This time of the year, all these oak trees, well, not all of them, but a lot of them will start dropping acorns and the deer absolutely love to eat them. And you'll find certain trees, the deer like to eat the acorns falling off of them more than others. This would be a good rifle spot, Jake. Yeah. You got a pond just inside of there, like what we call a flag pond. It's not like a fishing pond. It's got some, just a real swampy low area and the oaks go right up to it and them deer will travel that corridor like crazy. Can't believe there's no deer sitting right here. camera right now. So the other day when I was here, we were, we stopped right over there talking and I could hear acorns falling out of this tree and I didn't see any falling out of anywhere else. So I said, you know what, let's put a camera right here, filming that away. And I've got all kinds of cool pictures. Luke, you cutting another spear? All right, come on, let's go to the next spot. So I'm gonna take this camera and go put it somewhere else completely random because now I know, I know there's deer coming here. I know there's several does coming here. And if I can't find a better spot, I'll just come in here and hang a stand and sit blind because we're not solely hunting off the information these cameras give us. This is just telling us what's in the area. So this next spot we're pulling up to is where Jake sat last night. I actually put this stand in here for Luke to be able to sit in because it's a ground blind. Well, with the rain coming, I didn't want to put Jake in a ladder stand with the lightning and all that, so I put him in here. This is the part of the lease. It's like a high, white, sandy ridge full of scrub oaks and totally different than most of the other parts of the ranch. Here's the feeder, and right there's the ground blind. What'd you see here last night? Well, I saw about 50 turkeys right there. Then they went over there. I had one right there by those dead palmettos. Two, like two of them just sitting there scratching. Huh. I gotta jump down and grab them if I want to. I need to let this feeder down and check the camera. You can see nothing but hog tracks. So this particular spot, I have two big bar hogs coming at night. I've tried to kill them twice now, and both times they don't play that game. So I'm gonna make this feeder go off a little bit earlier in the day to see if that won't help out a little bit. Now this thing went off this morning. There would have been corn everywhere and it's all gone. I put this barbed wire around it because there's some cows in here and I don't want them to come in here and crush this 
feeder. My camera's right over there. Now, a lot of people have some negative things to say about feeders, but to me, we're helping the wildlife. Birds, squirrels, coons, possums, deer, hogs, everything benefits from these feeders. And we're not solely hunting off of them. This is just sort of to help the game in the area out. Once the rut starts kicking in, we'll, nobody will be hunting near these feeders. It's got these cool little timers on it. I can go through and see what time it's going off. Now, add a bunch of redbirds in here in the car. Oh, I love watching redbirds. Ah. <laughs> Bro, that's like scared the gun. Oh. All right, that's working. Now that we got that set, let me show you what it looks like from the blind. This is an awesome spot. You saw deer, hogs, and turkeys last night, right? Uh huh, I saw a lot. All right there's the feeder. You can sit in here and get out of the weather. Chairs did get wet. That shows how hard it rained. Go to the next spot, Luke. So we're at the stand that Jake killed his big boar hog in the last video. It's a big, tall millennium ladder stand. Right here behind it, we have a big pond and a little finger that goes around. And I'm pretty sure the deer are traveling this way. They're coming around, there's another finger going that away, and then a big finger going that away. And all on this side's a big open pasture. If you're wondering what this fence is right here, this is to keep the hogs out and allow the deer to jump in and the turkeys and everything else. The feeder does though throw corn outside of it so the hogs can eat around here. They can eat acorns. His hog was standing right there when he shot it. 30 yards, whop. So the hogs can feed on the outside, the deer can feed on the inside. This is a beautiful spot. There's a the camera right there. And we're headed to the next spot. We got plenty of work to do today. So to give you a good example on just how much it rained last night, this next spot we're pulling into was completely dry when we put this feeder in here. I'm gonna film all the way to the stand. Just look at all the water. So this is a spot we call the pretty spot. Big, beautiful oak flat surrounded by some ponds. And there's actually current. The water's flowing. Look at that. I want to come in here and put a stand, but we just haven't had time yet. Man. We got to change the batteries on this and get the heck out of here because there's definitely a lot of deer using this spot. And again, this fence is just to keep the hogs out but the corn gets slung all the way outside of it so the hogs get plenty to eat
headed back to camp now. Look at them. This is absolutely Oh, big, big horned owl. Those are so beautiful. Look at the water coming across our road. I think it's safe to say. What is that? Luke, look at this, Jake. Come on. Oh, the ants got him. No! Get it! Look at the Throw eel. Put him back in the, water. Throw him in the water. Go put him in the water quickly. Brooke, here you go. Yay. How neat was that? I, w I was about to grab the 22 and shoot out. Oh, was right there's an. Look at that. Another one. Where are they all coming from? Man, there are some serious amounts of water. Look right here, look right here, look right here. This is the danger of South Florida. Look how big this is. That's an alligator track. Where a big, huge gator come across the road. So, a little fun fact, when you get water flowing like this, these huge gators will lay right over there, anywhere where they can lay, and the water's rushing into their mouth because any kind of fish or gar or anything coming through here will hit them and they'll catch it just like that. Oh, there he goes. How awesome is that, Gabe? He come across right here. Luke, you gotta be careful when you're around these culverts. That big gator could be laying right there. And actually, I did just see a big swirl right there. They'll lay right there in the grass or right over there under the fence and anything coming through that touches their mouth, they can grab it really quickly. Oh, Jake! <laughs> gotcha. That's pretty neat. So that's it right now. We're gonna head back to Mr. Trevor's house. He just built the most beautiful house ever and has this huge pool and a big smoker and a big cooking area. So we're gonna take the hog back to his house we're going to cook and Jake's going to deer hunt his house tonight because he also has about 400 acres where he lives. So we'll see y'all back. What was it? Oh, man, the fire ants are bad here. Anyhow, we'll see you back at Trevor's house. So y'all ready for an episode of Cribs? We are at Mr. Trevor Roberts' house here in, is this Lake Placid or Sebring? Lake Placid. Lake Placid. This is his brand new house. His big old moose, big old elk chandelier. Look at that elk. But here's the room, Jake. Go in there and turn the lights on. Look at this. This thing over here. That's a mule deer. Florida whitetails. Look at look how just big this That's is. That's a big a bar there, boy. Look at Caroline. Look, look how wide. Man, he's girthy. Bro, Obviously, Caroline. some elk. If I show that, Merle was barking at that. Please. Luke loves this picture of Caroline. This is Trevor's daughter, Caroline. Why? Why did I like you that say picture that? right there. Why did This house is something serious, but wait till you see the back patio. Y'all check out this. Perfect infinity style pool overlooking his, I think it's 300 plus acres of a ranch that he owns. And it's a working cattle operation too. The cows come all the way up. Actually, we just went and fed Big Mama. Y'all watch this clip of Luke feeding Big Mama. Stick your hand out. What's up, girl? What's up, girl? She's like, you got something? Now watch your head now. Don't let her sling her head around and hit you. Luke, watch out behind you. Luke, watch out. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, girl? What's up, girl? Luke, yeah. this white one right here is ready to milk. See its milk sacks? See it hanging right there? Ow. You don't want to milk her? Look, that was a boy cow. <laughs> I know. 
Yeah, right here is what we've been talking about, acorns. So Trevor's like most cowboys are buying and selling cows constantly and he bought that cow and didn't know it was gonna be that friendly. Now they call her Big Mama. What do you say, Caroline? Should we show them the cannonball diving contest? Y'all yes. leave a comment below right now and tell me which kid wins best cannonball. Of course Luke had to just cheat. I'm gonna show you my favorite part of this big, beautiful house, cooking gazebo ranch right here. Check out his bar. Tons of pictures. Look at that. You can't beat memories. That big old bull elk. Old Jess. There's his mountain lion. Look at that. Look who this is. That's yours truly. Trevor's grizzly bear. That's me and Jake and Trevor at camp last year. Some scallops. There's Jake with his deer with Mr. Trevor. It's all a bunch of pictures and it's smooth as glass. It's really cool. He's got him a smoker, a green egg. I'm not quite sure what this is. This must be for frying. Beautiful stainless steel sink, refrigerator. He's got cattle guards all the way around to keep the cows from getting in. Big old flat screen, fire pit. It's pretty nice out here to say the least. We've killed a pile of turkeys right over there underneath that tree. Actually, if you watch Kelly Young's turkey hunting video, not this closest oak tree that's doesn't have many leaves, but the ones just beyond that is where Kelly did her turkey video two years ago. Y'all want to see something else pretty cool? Because here in South Florida, the mosquitoes get really, really bad. And the sun too. Obviously that's west, it gets cooking out here. Look at that, just a remote. Let's just put down the screens. Now I have a really cool story that I'm gonna have Trevor tell you and it's something that's gonna be pretty shocking. You're not gonna expect it. And I have the same type of story myself, but I'm gonna let Trevor tell you. All right, Mr. Trevor, I told him I had a good story. Tell him where you got your education. Late class at high school. You didn't go to college? No, sir, I didn't. OJT on the job training. So who left you all the money to buy this? I mean, look at this. Somebody had to have left you all this money. No, sir, it's called working. <laughs> Get out there and get it if you want it. There's, it's nothing but, like my dad used to say, there's nothing but air and opportunity out there. Go get it. That's what I'm saying. Now, some of you do know and some of you don't know, I only have a ninth grade education. Now, before any of you parents turn us off right now, we're not telling your kids not to go to school. I'm not telling you kids not to go to college, but you don't need it. You don't have to have it to survive. What you have to have to get a beautiful place like Mr. Trevor's you gotta realize that this is a couple million dollar place. He did it with zero education other than high school. He did it with hard work and dedication. And hard work doesn't mean get up and go to work every day and just be okay with the amount of money you're making. You always gotta be bettering yourself. You always gotta be wanting to better yourself. Meaning, if you're making $20 an hour, do what you gotta do to make 22. And when you get to 22, do what you gotta do to get to 30. If you have to leave a job to go to a new job, always have that motivation to keep pushing to better yourself. My whole life I dreamt of having a 31 contender. This year I bought one, paid cash for it in less than six months. I never, I never thought I would ever be able to have one, let alone buy one and just, here you go, here's the cash. And I did it from hard work and dedication. Now this place is something awesome. Trevor, awesome hard worker, but nobody left him this money. He did it all on his own. This is actually the first day I've seen it too. 
It's the first time I've been here. The last time I was here, he was sleeping in a little trailer while they were building this place. And to see it, it's, it's amazing. And just like that, folks, we're back at home in Stewart, Florida. Here's J Luke's hog. I did keep the foot on it because every now and then, some people not, might not believe that you're giving them a hog. And if you leave the foot, they know it's a hog. Some might think who knows what it is. I've got, where's he at? Where did he go? He's right over there walking over. That's Philip Smith. He's the pastor at my kid's school and the church at Community Christian here in Stewart. And they're making sausage for the church. What are you going to have it for? Like a big old powwow? Uh, no, it's for his freezer. Oh, your freezer. freezer. Oh, you're, there's the hog meat. It's yeah. going, what's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy. You're a firefighter, right? I am, yeah. Oh, I definitely don't mind giving it to you. So that's the last time y'all will see him. Next time he's out, he'll be in Jeremy's belly. That's it, folks. This has been a long one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. But right now, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.